ان الحمد لله ونحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئه اعمالنا ومن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ثم اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters wherever you are around the globe at this present time I greet you with the greetings of the believers. Assalam. Peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I first and foremost ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this time that we'll be spending together and to accept it as an hour that is solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow it to be an hour in which we can an hour in which we can grow together. An hour in which we can recharge our hearts from the trials and tribulations that have afflicted us from throughout the week. My dear brothers and sisters, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to create the creation, the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was the pen. In an authentic hadith from Ibadat ibn Samat radiallahu anhu, who said that when my father was on his deathbed, in his last hours he called me and he said, Inna awwala ma khalaq Allahu al qalam. He said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, he said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Inna awwala ma khalaq Allahu al-qalam. Faqala lahu, uqtub. Faqala ya Rabbi, wa ma aktub. Qala uqtub al-qadr, wa ma ka'in ila al-abid. In this hadith, my brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu, he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, that the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was the pen. And he said to it, write. The pen replied, my Lord, what shall I write? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, write the qadr, the divine destiny of every human being and every event that will take place until the end of time. Brothers and sisters, this powerful hadith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that the way to knowledge, that the way to preserve knowledge is through the pen. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written, has written the qadr, the divine destiny of every single one of us and every event that will take place until the end of time. Brothers and sisters, this deen, this way of life that we live, Islam, is a way of life that is based on intellect. It is a way of life that is based on knowledge, gaining knowledge, seeking knowledge. It is a way of life that is based on reading and writing and that of books. In the history of mankind, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach man that in which he did not know, he sent to him books. But as man began to become arrogant, he began to change these books with his own hand. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the final message, the final book to mankind, a book that will be preserved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the end of time, our glorious Quran. And the very first words, the very first message, the very first teachings in that book to mankind, the very first order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mankind is none other than read. Read. Iqra. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. Alladhi allama bil-qalam. Allama al-insan ma lam ya'lam. Read. Read in the name of your Lord who created. He created man from a clinging substance. Read, for verily your Lord is the most generous. He taught man with the pen and he taught him that in which he did not know. Read, my brothers and sisters. Read the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent you. Read the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the universe around you. Read the, the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought you with the pen. But read. But don't just read. Read in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read in the name of your Lord. The Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, knew exactly the weight of this word, the weight of this verse. Read. So much that when the verses began to come down from the Qur'an, those who converted early in the, in the first days of Islam, that when the verses of the Qur'an would be revealed, that they would quickly search for whatever they could to, to record it, to record this message, to preserve it, so that it was preserved until the end of time. They would search for whatever they could. They would write first on bones, also writing on pieces of leather, also on pieces of bark, whatever it is. But we must record it. We must, we must record this message that is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not only the Qur'an, also that of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is related from the Sahaba, Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As, radiallahu anhu. And Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As, at this time that we're talking about, was a small boy under the age of 10 years of age. And he had become Muslim. And he was of those from Mecca who knew how to read and write. Alhamdulillah, he had learnt the skill of reading and writing. So he relates in a hadith, he said, that I was writing everything that the Prophet ﷺ said. He used to write it down. Until the Quraysh prevented me from doing so. They came to me and they said to me, Why are you writing everything that Muhammad does? ﷺ? Why are you writing everything that he does? When he's only a man who sometimes speaks with anger and sometimes speaks with happiness. So Abdullah ibn Umar said that after that he stopped and he stopped writing the hadith. And he went to the Prophet ﷺ and told the Prophet ﷺ what they had said. And the Prophet ﷺ grabbed the pen and put it in his hand and said, write. He said, Uktub, for walladhi binafsi. Walladhi binafsi la akhraj, ma akhraj minni illa al-haq. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, write, for, for by the one whose hand my soul is in, nothing comes out of me except for the truth. And this, my brothers and sisters, is how the hadith was preserved the quran was preserved and the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was preserved was written written down recorded recorded by the most truthful sahaba 
so that we could have hadith today. And this is how Islam continued, Islam grew, that the knowledge became more and more available. So much so that when the, when the companions were given the order, they're given the order to, to migrate to Medina. The first thing when the Prophet ﷺ arrived in Medina, of course, built the masjid, made the akhuwa, the brotherhood between the brothers, but on the political agenda of the Prophet ﷺ was to teach the youth how to read and write. To teach the youth how to read and write. Because the Prophet ﷺ knew that this is the way, this is the way to grow, this is the way to, to become better as a nation. And when the companions fought in the battle of Badr, the first major battle in Islam, from the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they took 70 prisoners. 70 war criminals, prisoners. And they decided what they would do with them was ransom them off, back, ransom them back for money to the disbelievers. But before they did any of that, the Prophet ﷺ said to the prisoners, whoever, whoever teaches 10 children how to read and write, and until they are proficient in reading and writing, then he will be set free. Ten children. Each prisoner, ten children. Teach them to read and write until they're proficient and he will be set free. And this happened. The Prophet ﷺ let them free as soon as the children were proficient in reading and writing. And this, my brothers and sisters, this was the new generation. This was the beginning of the new generation. The new world. In fact, until then, the Arabian Peninsula was known as an illiterate nation. The Arabs were known as being illiterate. Only a few who were special were able to read and write. A few of the rich. But now the Prophet ﷺ had given the opportunity to any believer. And the new generation of youth. The generation of youth came through. Genera a generation that was later to become the ulama of Islam. Those who we take our knowledge from today. Of them was Ibn Zubayr, who was the first Muslim, the first child to be born after Hijrah. The first child to be born after Hijrah. And he learned to read and write in Medina. And until Ibn Zubayr was one of the great ulama, Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Abbas, Hafsa, Aisha, even the women. So much, it is so much known that the Sahaba, when the time that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu began to bring all the Qur'ans together, because in that time, they were put, going to make one Qur'an, one standard Qur'an, the Qur'an that we see today. And Abu Bakr gathered all the Qur'ans from all of the companions. Those companions were not just anybody, they were people who wrote the Qur'an. They wrote it from the mouth of the Prophet ﷺ. They were students of the Prophet ﷺ, and they were all youth, except for a few. And they wrote the Qur'an with their own hands. And not only did they write the Qur'an preserving it, but also they wrote the tafsir. The meaning of the Qur'an next to it. And in some pages, some of these musahif, some of these Qur'ans that were found that there was the Qur'an written and next to it was the tafsir. Next to it was the explanation of the Qur'an. And we're talking about explanations from Sahaba like that of Ibn Zubayr, Ibn Mas'ud, Ubay bin Zayd, and many of the Sahaba, so much that these were the new generation, the generation that knew how to read and write, the generation that knew, that was studying with the Prophet And in fact, after the Prophet left this world, Aisha, anha, became the best 
the, the greatest Sahaba for knowledge. So much that she had her own Quran that she had written, tafsir, all of the notes. She had a hadith that she had, that she had recorded. This was the way. This was the meaning of Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read. To seek knowledge. To attain knowledge. And of those Sahaba was none other than Zayd bin Thabit. Zayd bin Thabit, my brothers and sisters, was at the time of the Battle of Badr was a 13-year-old boy. A 13-year-old boy who had learnt to read and write previously. Quite possibly from Mus'ab. Mus'ab the, the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, who was sent earlier by the Prophet sallallahu And Zayd bin Thabit stood in the line. It was the Battle of Badr. All of the Sahaba were in a line. And Zayd bin Thabit stood in the line with a big sword, he was a 13 year old boy, small child, until the Prophet ﷺ looked and he saw the small boy in the line and the Prophet ﷺ went over to him and told him that he could not participate in the jihad because he was too small. Wallahi, Zayd bin Thabit's heart was broken. He wanted to participate. He wanted to be a man. He wanted to be with the Sahaba. But instead, he had to go home with his head down, walking with his mother. Also, his mother wanted him to be in the jihad. Until Zayd, when he went home, yeah, he was deflated, but he wasn't beaten. He said to his mother, if I can't fight with the Prophet wasallam, then I want to study with him. And he made the intention to become a student of knowledge. Then Zayd bin Thabit went with his mother to the Prophet wasallam after the Battle of Badr. And told, told the Prophet ﷺ that they wanted to study with him. That he wanted to study with the Prophet ﷺ. And he had learned 16, uh, 16 surahs of the Qur'an chapters. So he recited them to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ accepted him. And he became the best student of the Prophet ﷺ. So much that the Prophet ﷺ would have him write down the verses of the Qur'an. Whenever they were revealed, he would be of those who wrote them down. And eventually Zayd bin Thabit became the one, the one Sahaba who everybody trusted when they were bringing all the Qur'ans together. It was his final decision on how the, the Qur'an, which Qur'an to use and the surahs that would be inside because he was the most knowledgeable. And also he had read the Qur'an twice in the month to the Prophet ﷺ before the Prophet ﷺ passed away. Brothers and sisters, this is Islam. Read in the name of your Lord. Inshallah, we're going to go to a break now. But after the break, don't go away because we have a really special surprise for everybody out there. Inshallah, Ta'ala, we'll go to a short break and we'll return just after this break. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم In a game of golf both the caddy and the golfer have the same goal, to get the ball into the hole. Interest-free banking is similar. With a clear view of the fairway, a predefined agreement without shifting targets, things should end up where you want them. Your deposits are safe and your funds are ethically managed with a transparent and equitable approach to sharing risk and reward. No interest burden means more time to relax without the worry of nasty surprises. Rest assured, our interest is mutual. Jazz Bank, Nigeria's first full-fledged non-interest bank. today to talk about the Quran and the modern world the religion that is acceptable to Almighty Creator 
is Islam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. The more you know about him, the more you realize how you want to be like him. For every messenger, a prophet that Allah has sent, Allah gave him one dua. Allah sent prophets after prophet, messenger after messenger to remind everyone, don't deny the Creator. Thee alone we worship and thee alone we seek help. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Never on this planet walked such a person as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. And welcome back to Living Hearts, uh, the program that inshallah we pray, really we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He allows it to be an hour in which we can grow together, an hour in which we can recharge our hearts from the trials and tribulations that have afflicted us from throughout the week. Now, brothers and sisters, I promised you there will be a surprise after the break. So inshallah ta'ala, we do have a surprise for you. And inshallah ta'ala, we'll go straight into that surprise. Uh, if the brothers are ready there. Okay, we're not quite ready yet. But we're talking about read. Reading in the name of Allah. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by the pen. And he said, Noon wal qalami. Noon and by the pen. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something, it means that that thing is something that is adeem, something that has been, it is great in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have the special surprise for you right now. So we'll go straight to that surprise inshallah ta'ala and we'll see you in a short moment there. Change and welcome back my brothers and sisters to Living Hearts. No, you're not imagining things. We are actually here in downtown Cairo, Egypt, in front of the 44th Cairo International Book Fair. The favorite time of year for myself and my family. It is a time where millions of books are gathered here in Cairo to be put on display and for sale. 90% of these books are Islamic books from Muslim authors, from Muslim countries from all around the world. We have Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, books from everywhere around the world. This, my brothers and sisters, is really the legacy of those first words in the Quran, Iqra bismi rabbik alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord. The atmosphere is pumping here with the people. The weather's warm. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go inside and take a look at what, what we can find. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Jameel, Yemen books, MashaAllah, Aqeedah, Subhanallah, everything, Subhanallah, Salaam Alaikum, Alaikum Salaam. Kaifa, hello, Kaifa. Alam, Salam, Bikum. This is my dear brother Abd al Alim from, uh, from Yemen, from Sana'a in Yemen. And Abd al Alim has a bookstore, uh, Khalib bin Walid. Khalib bin Walid bookstore from Yemen. And uh, how's your English, brother? You speak English? No, I speak English. No, no English. 
Okay, but all these books in Arabic, but they do have English books uh, in Sana'a, in Yemen. And uh, it's really good to see you, brother. Yani, Fursa Ta'iba and Araka, Wallahi. Yani, Kunt, I was, I used to buy from, uh, I used to buy from Abdul Alim when I used to live in Yemen. I used to buy from this bookstore. Alhamdulillah, Allah Barak Fik. It's so good to see you, brother, really. Barak Allah Fik, inshallah. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah, how are you, bro? Alhamdulillah, khair. What's your name, brother? My name is Irvin Saifullah Jafaroj from Ar Slovenia. From Slovenia, from Subhanallah, Slovenia. brother, brother. And how are you enjoying? How are you enjoying the uh, the exhibition here of the books? It's really beautiful. It's really Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And a lot of variety of books, everything. So a person can really choose what he wants to buy and take his time picking. I'm already third time here. Actually, I bought most of my books already before. Now I'm just doing the last, what I can find and buy. This, so is, your, this is your third time, brother? Yeah, I'm already third what time. What you got there, brother? What you got yeah, in, in I the have, uh, first of all, I have a tafsir, Quran bi Quran, min Shaykh Shaykh It is Mashallah. one of the most famous and one of the most, one of the best tafsir of Quran bi Quran, you know, the, the translation. And some books of usul, which are more of technical, matter because I am the fourth year of Azhar, ah, Sharia yeah, Islamia, yes. Ah, so that will help me inshallah, inshallah after I return to my country so I can explain hopefully ah, what I've learned here. Spread Islam there inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. 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 Yes. Rising inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. Okay brother, I won't Thank keep you, you too long because uh, you know, I don't want to keep you too long there so Inshallah, Jazakallah khair and thank you. enjoy your time at the Thank at the you, book thank you. Barakallah. I hope all the best to you and your audience. Barakallah. Barakallah. Okay, brothers and sisters, we've been walking around for hours and we finally made it. We've made it to the International Islamic Publishing House. This is a publishing company that specializes in Islamic books in the English language and languages from all around the world, Indonesian, Malaysian, Chinese, all languages. They have over 600 books in the English language, written by professionals, written, some written translated books, like this of the, the Seerah of Ali bin, Ab, Ab, uh, Ali bin Abi Talib, and also we have books that have been written by reverts themselves. This is a great opportunity and a great place to go if you're looking for books to benefit yourself and to increase your knowledge. Remember, read in the name of your Lord and read the books that will benefit you in this life. This is my advice to my brothers and sisters from this, this shop here at the International Islamic Publishing House. We also have brother Amjad here who's working for Dar es Salaam. Uh, how are you brother Amjad? Salaam alaikum. Brother, you know, I'm looking at all these books. I mean, there's so many great books. We've got Religion on the Rise. We've got The Choice from Ahmed Didat. There's so many books. The Religion of Truth. Subhanallah, this is really the, is really the legacy of uh, the, the first words of the Quran. Read in the name of your Lord. Brother, can you give me some advice on which book would you recommend if, yes. if I was going to buy a book? There are a huge number of people coming from around the whole world, from British, from America, from, from Nigeria, Malaysia, around the whole world. And they choose this book. This is the end of the world, signs of the hour, major and minor signs of the hour. The exactly. end of the world, yes. signs of the hour, yes. major and minor. Yes. And that's uh, Doc, Dr. Muhammad Arifi, I see. Yes, yes, absolutely. Dr. Yes. Muhammad Arifi. From uh, Saudi Arabia. Yes. There. And another book is Educating Your Children, the Child Education in Islam, Abdullah Nas Alwan. Yes, and Mashallah. many other books are here in the bookshop. There are a great number of people coming around the whole world from especially America and British United Kingdom, which coming here to visit us and to have a look around, uh, around our bookshop. Now, this is very good advice, brother. Jazakallah khair. I mean, you, you, can I have a look at uh, Muhammad Arifi okay. there, please? I think maybe, inshallah, I'll take this one. Inshallah. On your advice, brother, yes. on your advice, yes. inshallah. It will be a gift for you. We've been walking around all day, and Jazakallah khair. Uh, also, Sukaina, my daughter, yes. Sukaina, 
Uh, which book have you got there, Sakina? Have you got some book? No? <laughs> she's a little bit tired. She's also been walking around. So, inshallah ta'ala, thank you very much, Amjad, and thank you, Dar es Salaam, for allowing us to uh, conduct, this, uh, conduct this talk here, inshallah. Wa barakallah feekum. And inshallah, uh, viewers, try to benefit from these books. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us these days that we can translate books into, into different languages all around the world. Dar es Salaam doesn't only have English books, they have Indonesian, French, Turkish, Spanish, every language now we have books translated and this is a great opportunity for us to learn our deen. The books, they don't lie. The books, they don't lie to you. The books are the, are the way to, 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 talk, to search for the knowledge, to seek the knowledge, my brothers and sisters. Jazakam Allahu Khair. Barakallah Fiqh. اسمح بصوتك اسمع الاقوال كلام الله السلام عليكم عليكم السلام This one here brother هذا بكم يا اخي هذا 850 850 هذا ابن كثير صح نعم ابن كثير This is ابن كثير البدايه والنهايه written over 600 years ago subhanallah how, how much is it, brother? Bikem? Taib, inshallah. Fadnal. Jazakallah khair, ya akhi. Alif ta'alaik, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, everybody who comes to the book fair always has one book in mind that they want to buy, and I got mine, and we're going to head off now, inshallah, and return to the studio to collect your telephone calls, and you can discuss about what, about what you saw today. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم brothers and sisters welcome back I hope you enjoyed that really I, we had a lot of fun that day at the uh, Cairo International Book Fair and I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope that uh, anyone who's in Egypt, I hope that they went and enjoyed themselves. Uh, it was really a great, great fair and a great time. Uh, before I go any further, we will start taking the telephone calls today, inshallah. Uh, the telephone, of course, is on the screen there, 202 38555 249 or, or 249 uh, 0 or 249 and brothers and sisters there's a there's an Arabic saying there's an English saying first of all that is the the pen is mightier than the sword but in the Arabic version of that is that the pen is greater than a hundred arrows now why is that that the pen is greater than a hundred arrows and they say that because you can fire a hundred arrows and you might hit a couple of parts of the body but it's very hard to hit the heart but with the pen and with words that is how you can reach the heart that is how you can hit the hearts and hitting the hearts can change nations and sometimes it can also be used as a weapon a weapon for Islam or a weapon against Islam and we see today that there are ulama who are using it as a weapon for Islam. To give victory to Islam. And this is what is asked from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there are those who are trying to use it against Islam. And this is what has happened in many of the Muslim lands that we live in today. Many of the lands that we live in we find that the school curriculum for example is a curriculum that is made to destroy the child. It is made to, to, to hurt the child so that he doesn't want to read. He's so tired after school that he doesn't want to read anything. Or they make them read the things that they want them to read. Like a brainwashing, brain changing. But no. Islam, we have, we have, we have this word read. It is the first re word in the Quran. And we have sheikhs that are defending. Defending Islam with the most mightiest weapon the pen and there are many sheikhs my brothers and sisters sometimes even 
Sometimes even a book is so powerful that can end you in jail or it can end you, to, it, it can have you being killed. Yani, istashhad. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani, that, you're, that, that you're killed by a, a dhanam, a, a, an oppressor. And this is what has happened for many of the ulama. If you see, if we take a look at the ulama of Islam, those who wrote books, you find that almost all of them spent time in prison. Almost all of them spent time uh, being attacked because they spoke the word of truth in their books. If we look at uh, Asqalani, Ibn Hajj al-Asqalani, and also his father, those who write Fat al-Bari and other, uh, other books, his father, they spent time. His father was actually put into a quarry to do hard labor because of things that he wrote in his books. Ahmed bin Hanbal, who, the, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah wa Jamaat, Rahimahum, Rahimahum Allah, who stood up against the kalam of the Shia, the kalam of those who said that the Quran was uh, something that was created. But Ahmed bin Hanbal stood, stood firm and wrote the truth. And that ended him up. Then that ended him in prison. Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah, when he wrote the truth, he ended up in prison. His student Ibn Qayyim and continuing. And even today, you find many of the ulama who have gone to prison for speaking the truth when they write in their books. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them and to reward us of those who are participating. Brothers and sisters, something special today on Living Hearts, uh, the IIPH, one of the bookstores that we went to uh, and visited at the bookstore, they gave us a few books and inshallah ta'ala, insh ta uh, here, here is the books here. I have one book to give away to one, one man, uh, one brother, and one book to give away to one sister. One book for the brother and one book for the sisters. And all, all you have to do is call in and answer a question, inshallah. So we'll be ready for you to call in and I'll give you the question. In the year 200, uh, 200 after Hijrah, there was a great library that opened up in Andalus, Bela del Andalus, which was in Spain, of course, but it was Muslim Spain. And it was in Granada. And it was the most, the most influential place in the world. And most of the knowledge that we have today came from, from this library, a library that opened up in Granada. And this library had a massive amount of books. And this is your question. You have a choice. Did it have over a thousand books? Did it have over a million books? Or did it have over 400,000 books? That's your choice. So you can call in. If you call in on the number 0202 we will give you one of these books that were given to us and we will mail it out to you, inshallah ta'ala. So uh, please call in my brothers and sisters and uh, take your opportunity there. And all you have to do is guess how many books were in that uh, library there. And subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, if we look at Andalus in Spain, we see that this, those books that were in Andalus there were written by, they were all books that were written by hand. All books that were written by hand. And we had libraries throughout the Muslim world. Where are the libraries today? Where are they? The oppressors that have been oppressing us have not encouraged us to read because they know that reading is the way to develop. It is the way of developing a nation. And we have a phone call already. Brother Maher from Jordan. Brother Maher, Salam Alaikum. Brother Maher, are you there? Salam Alaikum, Yaqi. Hello, we can't hear. We seem to have got cut off there. Call back in, Brother Mahar. Call back in. Okay? So we see that whenever a nation, whenever a nation learns to read and write, and, and the whole nation can read and write, you see that that nation develops. And that's what we're seeing today, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, I went through and had a look at the illiteracy, or at the literacy rates around the world. And I was 
sad to see that many of our Muslim countries are lacking in literacy, especially when the first word of Islam is read. But why has this happened? Because many of us, we have left, left Islam. We have left the Quran. No, I'm not going to follow the Quran. I'm going to find something, follow something else. And this is what has happened. And subhanAllah, because of that, my brothers and sisters, you find that the numbers of literacy in many of the Muslim countries are down. And the saddest, I'm sorry to say, brothers and sisters, but the two saddest countries that I saw, the first was Afghanistan, that only 28% of the people know how to read and write. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. Astaghfirullah al This is haram, wallahi. Haram. That only 28% of the population knows how to read. We should all know how to read. This is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other was Morocco. Morocco was around 62%. That's not good enough, my brothers and sisters. That's not good enough. What you need to do, what you need to do is to train yourself and to train your family to read books. Read in the name of Allah. We have another telephone call. We got Yusuf from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yusuf. Uh, my choice is uh, uh, option two. Option two, which is which was over four hundred thousand uh, books. Over four hundred thousand books, brother. That that was your answer. Uh, no, the million. The yeah. one with a million. Oh, the million. Yeah. So, sorry, brother. You're wrong there. Sorry. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> Anything else you got there, brother? How did you enjoy the, uh, the, the cut from uh, the, the book fair there? Uh, yeah, I was going to uh, tell you that. It was really, really cool, actually. <laughs> In fact, the, special, the, the best part was when you were carrying that 10 kgs of uh, tafsir on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, brother. Okay. Jazakallah khair, brother. We got another phone call coming through. Sorry, Yusuf. We'll have to leave you there, brother, inshallah. But Jazakallah khair. Uh, we've got another telephone coming through there. Yahya from Nigeria. Algeria, Algeria. Yahya, assalamu alaikum, Yahya. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Yahya. Sheikh, I wish you, uh, you praise Allah for, for, for me. I wish you, uh, you praise Allah for me. So, sorry, say that again, brother. You, you hope that the prize is for you. Okay, go ahead and answer, brother. Yes, yes. What's your choice there, Yahya? Speak from the phone, brother, not from the television. Speak from the phone. Uh, uh, my daughter, my daughter wish uh, speak with you. Go my ahead. My daughter will speak with you. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm listening, Yahya. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. Maryam from Algeria. I want to say something. Yes, go ahead. About generous behavior. Okay, go ahead. Uh, have you ever thought about it? Decent, generous behavior can turn a set day into something special or transform the way a person lives his or her life. When you do something nice and kind for someone, you'll notice a beautiful feeling of ease and, be and peace. One of the best feelings, um, sorry, acts of love and kindness release as uh, the, the emotional equivalent of uh, endorphins, the feelings good, chemical with, um, which flood your sense after exercise. Mashallah, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. What's your name there? Uh, Maryam. Maryam, Maryam. And how old are you there, Maryam? Maryam. MashaAllah, thank you very much, uh, Sister Maryam, and thank you very much, Brother Yahya. I still got two books here in my hands, brothers and sisters. And those books, one of them is for a sister, and one of them is for a brother. And the question you've got to answer there is how many books were in the library in Spain? Was it? One million, we already said no to one million. Was it over a thousand or was it over 400,000? And these books were all written, but handwritten. And this was around the, two, the year 200 uh, after Hijrah, only 200 years. We're talking about 
1,200 years ago, 1,200 years ago, when Europe didn't even know how to read. Shakespeare wasn't even thought of back then. And we had libraries that were open, open and lending books to believers throughout the world. So answer the question, brothers and sisters. Call in. We want to give these two books away. They were given to us by the International Islamic Publishing House. And the phone number is to, is to be called 0202 38555 248 249. And please call in, brothers and sisters. Even if you don't want to answer the question, you should give it a go anyway. But if you don't want to answer it, call in. And maybe you've got something you can tell us to, to help us or to advise us about reading. We have another telephone call here. We have Vanessa from Egypt. Anissa, sorry, Anissa from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, Anissa. Hello. Hello, assalamu alaikum, Anissa. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you doing, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, bekhair. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Thank you. And Sheikh, let me guess. I think it's over four hundred thousand. Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar, sister. You've won the the book. The path to self-fulfillment. Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. God is great. Con Congratulations, sister. I want you to leave your, your address with the, uh, the brothers in the control room. And inshallah, we will send this book to you. You're in, you're in Egypt. Are you in Cairo? Or yeah, where yeah, I'm in Cairo. Okay, inshallah. Leave your address with the brothers in the control room. And inshallah, we will... Uh, we will pass you on that book. Congratulations, sister, the path to self-fulfillment. Uh, sister Anissa. Uh, do we have another phone call, you said, brother? We have another phone call there? Taib, inshallah. So as I was saying, so we've got rid of one of the books. We still have another book left. And this book, actually, the books, I, I wrote a small message inside too. So, Jazakim uh, Okay, we, Okay, so... Call in, brothers and sisters. Call in. We've still got a book to give away for the brothers. And we might have to think of a new question because now uh, that question's already been answered. So what we'll do, inshallah ta'ala, is uh, in a minute we'll think of that new question, inshallah ta'ala. But as I was saying, my brothers and sisters, if you look 200 years after Hijrah, and in fact, 80, in the year 85 after Hijrah, 85 after Hijrah, we had in Cairo a... A book, uh, a library that was called Dar al Hikmah. And this library used to, subhanAllah, used to lend books to people, like, like the libraries that you see today. We had this back then, but we don't have it today. SubhanAllah, what is the reason for this? The reason is that we're busy following the those who who occupied our lands, those who took over our lands. We're busy trying to learn their languages instead of looking deep into what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us, and that is to read, read in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we still have one book to give away. The name of it is 40 Hadiths on Poisonous Social Habits, and I've written something inside. The question that we can have is, what is the name of the, the book, uh, the library that was in Cairo in the year 85 after Hijrah? 85 after Hijrah. Very easy. I just told you the answer. So if you're paying attention, inshallah ta'ala, you'll receive the book. Now before we go any further, we ask some questions on the Facebook, which we do every week. And that was, uh, what is the importance of literacy, uh, literacy in Islam, reading and writing? And we said, share us your thoughts. So we have uh, Samia Saeed. Of course, uh, she said it's the only religion that started with the message Iqra. And we can take the importance of literacy uh, for Islam from this word. And then she said some more. We'll go to the next person. Fatima uh, bint Jumawata. She said, she, first she says, no Valentines in Islam. Good advice, sister. There's no Valentines in Islam. And then she said, uh, the Prophet Wasallam said, whoever imitates a people is from them. Uh, not really related to that, but uh, good advice anyway. Uh, the next comrade, he has said, the importance of literacy can be over emphasis because uh, only that you can worship Allah. Uh, okay, you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with knowledge. Samia Sajid, seeking knowledge is obligatory. Uh, Amina Darbi has also said her answer. And the rest, I think, brothers and sisters, we don't seem to have too much time. 
but we can get those uh, we can uh, if you want to see what other people have said go on to the Facebook and if you haven't joined up with the Facebook yet then make an effort to do so because uh, we will pass out different reminders and the reminder for this week is to read that is the reminder if you haven't started then start how do you start the best way is to train yourself or your children okay if you don't read to your children every night a book then they will never know to read books you should get your children some books and read for them but the task this week is if you haven't started to read anything then 10 minutes a day after Salat al-Fajr or before you go to sleep get a buy a book Islamic book and look for those books brothers we still have this 40 hadith book that we haven't given away and uh, if we haven't given it away inshallah we'll have to choose someone from the Facebook but inshallah, we seem to have run out of time here. Whoever would like to call in quickly can grab this book. It's a giveaway. Please take it. Otherwise, inshallah ta'ala, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, my brothers and sisters. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are seeking knowledge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path, those who are reading in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve us and to preserve our children and to make give us what is best in this life and the next i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge to increase us in iman to increase us in courage and to increase us in our ability in our ability in life and in our ability to read and to seek knowledge in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my brothers and sisters unfortunately that's all we have. We didn't get to give away this book, so we're going to have to do it on the Facebook. Jazakum Allahu Khair. And inshallah, until next week, my brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi Barakatuh. Living in a lawful way, be mindful of what you say, be sincere when you pray. Today could be your last day, bear each other no malice. Greed and faith can coexist in the same heart. Oh, Lord, only you can change your heart. We call upon you to do so, so that we may submit to you.